the world's great novels. <laughs> Presenting A Child is Born, the beautiful Christmas play written especially for radio by Stephen Vincent Benet. I'm your narrator. It's my task to say just where and how things happen in our play. It's an old task. Old as the human heart. Old as those bygone players in their art who, in old days when faith was nearer earth, played out the mystery of Jesus' birth in halls or village green or market square for all who chose to come and see them there. And if they knew that King Herod in his crown was really Watt, the cobbler of the town, and Tom the fool played Abraham the wise, they did not care. They saw with other eyes. The story was their own, not far away. As real as if it happened yesterday. So we tonight, who are your players too, ask but to tell that self-same tale to you in our own words. The plain and simple speech of human beings, talking each to each. Troubled with our own cares, not always wise, and yet, at moments, looking toward the skies. The time is time. The place is anywhere. The voices speak to you across the air to say that once again, a child is born. A child is born. There is a town where men and women live their lives as people do in troubled times. Times when the world is shaken. There is an inn. A woman sings there in the early morning. In Bethlehem of Judea there shall be born a child. A child born of woman and yet undefiled. He shall not come to riches, to riches and might, but in love is able, he shall be man's light. King Herod, King Herod, now what will you say of the child in the stable this cold winter day? I hear the wind blowing across the bare thorn. I fear not, King Herod, if this child may be born. Singing again? I told you not to sing. I'm sorry, I forgot. Forgot? That's fine. That's wonderful. That answers everything. The times are hard enough and bad enough for anyone who tries to keep an end. The country's occupied. We have no country. You've heard of that, perhaps. You've seen their soldiers, haven't you? You know just what can happen to our sort of people once there's a little trouble? Answer me. I've seen, I know. You've seen. You know. And you keep singing songs. Not ordinary songs, the kind of songs that might bring in a little bit of trade. Oh, no. You have to sing rebellious songs about King Herod. I think he must be a wicked man. Oh. Do you pretend to know the ins and outs of politics? And why the great folk do the things they do? And why we have to bear them? Because it's we, we, we who have to bear them. First and last and always. In every country and in every time. They grind us like dry wheat between the stones. Don't you know that? I know that somehow kings should not be wicked and grind down the people. I know that kings like Herod should not be. All right, all right. I'm not denying that. Still, there he is. He's king. How will it help if I go out and write on someone's wall... Down with King Herod. What's it worth? The cross for me. The whipping post for you. The inn burned, the village fined for treason. Just because one man didn't like King Herod. For that's the way things are. Yet there are men. Oh, yes, I know. Fanatics, rebels, fools. Seekers of some vague kingdom in the stars. They hide out in the hills and stir up trouble. Call themselves prophets, too. And prophesy that something new is coming to the world. The Lord knows what. 
Well, it's a long time coming. And meanwhile, we're the wheat between the stones. Something must come. Believe it if you choose. But meantime, if we are clever, we can live and even thrive a little. Clever wheat that slips between the grinding stones and grows in little green blade sprinkles on the ground. At least if you'll not sing subversive songs to other people but your poor old husband. Uh, uh, come, wife. I've got some news. I didn't mean to be so angry with you. You've some queer fancies in that head of yours. Lord, don't I know. But you're still the tall girl with the grave eyes and the brook-running voice I took without a dollar or a price out of your father's house because... Oh, well... Because you came. And they've not been so bad the years since then. Now, have they? No. That's right. Give us a kiss. I couldn't help the child. I know you think of that this time of year. He was my son, too, and I think of him. I couldn't help his dying. No, my husband. I am a barren vow. I think and sing and am a barren vow. Oh, come, come, come. The fault is mine. I had my joyous season, my season of full ripening and fruit. And then the silence and the aching breast. I did not mean to speak of this at all. I do not speak of it. I will be good. There is much left, so much. The kindness and the bond that lasts for years and all the small and treasurable things that make up life and living. Do not care so much. I've forgotten. I'll sing softly, not sing at all. It was long past and gone. Tell me your news. Is it good news? Ah, the best. The prefect comes to dinner here tonight with all his officers. Oh. Oh, yes, I know. The enemy, of course, the enemy. But someone has to feed them. And they'll pay? Cash. On the nail? Yes. Good. I thought you'd say so. Oh, we'll make no great profit. Not tonight. But once he's come here, he'll come again. And we shall live, not die. And put some coin, some solid enemy and lovely coin under the hearthstone, eh? Ah. What's that? Uh, uh. I'll go. The maids aren't up yet, lazy bones. A minute, just a minute. It's early yet. You needn't beat the door down. This is an honest inn. Good morning. Hail Caesar. Are you the keeper of this inn? Yes, sir. Orders from the prefect. No other guests shall be entertained at your inn tonight after sundown. The prefect wishes all the rooms to be at the disposal of his guests. All the rooms? You understand plain Latin, don't you? Yes, sir, but... Well? Uh, uh, sir, when the prefect first commanded me, there was a party of my countrymen engaged for a small room. He'd hear no noise, no noise at all. This is the prefect's feast, the Saturnalia. You've heard your orders. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed, sir. See, they are carried out. No other guests. Hail Caesar! Hail Caesar. Well, that's pleasant. All rooms at the disposal of the prefect. No other guests. Uh, I'll have to warn Ben Ezra. But he's a sound man. He'll understand. We'll cook his mutton here and send it to him. And the wine, too. A bottle of good wine. The uh, second best. Let the prefect pay for it. That will make up. No other guests. Remember, no other guests. I will remember. Well, then, to work, to work. All this work to do and the fire barely started. Sarah? Leo? Where are those lazy servants? Where's the fish? Where's the new bread? Why haven't we begun? Leah and Sarah, come and help your missus. I'll rouse the fools. There's work to do today. In Bethlehem, a there was an inn also. There was no room within it for any but the foe. No child might be born there, no bud come to bloom. For there was no chamber, and there was no room. 
And the day passed, and night fell on the town. Silent and still and cold. The houses lay huddled and dark beneath the watching stars. And only the inn windows streamed with light. <laughs> and then the Sicilian said to the Ethiopian, he said... Well, I remember when we first took over Macedonia. There was a girl... Why is it very quiet? The prefect wishes to say a few words. Gentlemen, men of Rome, mindful of Rome's historic destiny and of our good friend King Herod, who has chosen alliance with Rome rather than a useless struggle... Keep them under with a firm hand. What's he Keep saying? Forever. I don't know. I don't know the big the words. The soldiers you and your soldiers. Oh, he's not so bad. He brought me a trinket. See? You and your Roman trinket. I hate serving them. I must have spit in a cup each time I serve them. Oh, you wouldn't dare. Oh, wouldn't I, though? Here, yeah, yeah. here. What's this? What's this? Why are you standing idle? They're calling for more wine. Well, let Leah serve them. She likes their look. Sarah. Yes, mistress. Please, Sarah. We've talked like this so many times. Very well, mistress. But let her go first. Well, go on. Get up the stairs, you little soldier's comfort. I hope he pinches you. Mistress, it's not my fault. It's Sarah. Oh, go, go, both of you. Huh. Huh. Well, that's a pretty little tempest for you. You ought to beat the girl. She's insolent and shows it. Oh, we can't be too hard on her. Her father's dead, her brother's in the hills. And yet she used to be a married child. You always take their side. And yet you'd think a self-respecting inn could have some decent and well-mannered maids. But no such luck. Sullens and sluts, the lot of them. Ah, give me a stool. I'm tired. Ah. Ah. Say, say, 30 dinners and double for the prefect. And the wine, best, second best, and common. Oh, not bad. But then, huh, why do you sit there staring at the fire, so silent and so waiting and so still? I don't know. I'm waiting. Waiting for what? I do not know. Something new and strange. Something I've dreamt about in some deep sleep, truer than any waking. I do not know its shape, its will, its purpose. And yet all day its will has been upon me. And there is light in it, and fire, and peace, newness of heart, and strangeness like a sword. And all my body trembles under it. And yet I do not know. Oh, you're tired, my dear. Well, we shall sleep soon. No, I'm not tired. I'm expectant as a runner is before a race. A child before a feast day. A woman at the gates of life and death. Expectant for us all. For all of us who live and suffer on this little earth with such small brotherhood. Something begins. Something is full of change and sparkling stars. Something is loose that changes all the world. And yet, I cannot read it. I wait and strive and cannot find it. Hark, oh. what's that? They can't come in. I don't care who they are. We have no room. Go to the door. What? Well? Is this the end? Sir, we are travelers, and it is late and cold. May we enter? Who uh, is it? Just a pair of country people, a woman and a man. My wife and I are weary. May we come in? I'm sorry, my good man. We have no room tonight. The prefect's orders. No room at all. Now, nobody likes turning trade away, but I'm not my own master. N not tonight. It may be in the morning. Wait. Must you mix in this? Wait. Good sir, the enemy are in our house and we... Oh. I 
did not see or wife, I did not know. Her name is Mary. She is near her time. Yes. Yes. Go. Get a lantern. Huh? Quickly. What? Quickly. I... I once had a child. We have no room. That's true. And it would not be right. Not here. Not now. Not with those men whose voices you can hear. Voices of death and iron. King Herod's voices. Better the friendly beast. What am I saying? There is... We have a stable at the inn, safe from the cold at least. And if you choose, you shall be very welcome. It is poor, but the poor share the poor their crumbs of bread out of God's hand so gladly. And that may count for something. Will you share it? Gladly and with great joy. The lantern, husband? Nay, I will take it. I can see the path. Something begins, begins, starlit and sunlit. Something walks abroad in flesh and spirit and fire. Something is loose to change the shaken world. The night deepens. The stars march in the sky. The prefect's men are gone. The inn is quiet for the sleepy servants and their mistress who clean the last soiled pot. The innkeeper drowses before the fire, but in the street outside... We for shepherds watch by night With a hay, with a hole A star shone over us so bright We left our clocks to seek its light In excelsis Deo Gloria Shepherds, we may look on Jesus' majesty, and yet the star says it is he. It is he, it is he, sing it down the Sing so late. How can they sing so late? Now go and sing. Wait, I'll rub the window pane, it's rhymed with frost. They're shepherds from the hills. Shepherds? Yes, mistress. They have crooks and staves. Their padded cloaks are ragged on their backs. They've gone toward the stable. The stable of our inn. I... They're gone, but... Mistress... Mistress, do you hear? Hear what? The tread of steeds on the hard ground. Iron hoofs ringing clear. A company that comes from out the east. I've never seen such things. I'm afraid. These are great lords, great kings with strange and memorable beasts and crowns upon their heads. What's that? What's that? Lords, nobles, kings, here in Bethlehem, in our poor town, a fortune. Oh, what fortune? Stand from the window there, you silly girl. I'll speak to them. My gracious noble masters, worthy and mighty kings, our humble inn is honored by your high nobility. Come in, come in. We've fire and bed and wine. Huh? I do not understand it. They're gone. They followed the poor shepherds to the stable. They would not carry with us. No, not one. And yet... Peace, husband. You know well enough why none would carry with us, and so do I. I lay a while in sleep, and the voice said to me, Gloria, Gloria, Gloria in excelsis Deo. The child is born, the child, the child is born. And yet I did not rise and go to him, for I was jealous that my child should die and her child live. And so I have my judgment, and it is just. No, mistress, mistress, tis my fault, not you. You told me, seek the strangers in the stable and see the head all care, but I... For God, pitying your soldiers. Oh, Sarah. I'm sorry, Lee. 
My tongue's too sharp. Mistress, the fault was mine. You told me also, and I well remembered. I did not go. Sarah. I did not go. Brooding on mine own wrongs, I did not go. It was my fault. If there was any fault, wife, it was mine. I did not wish to turn them from my door. And yet I know I love the chink of money. Love it too well. The good, sound, thumping coin. Love it, oh God, since I'm speaking truth, better than wife or fire or chick or child. And there are many like me. And God pity us. God pity us indeed. For we are human. And do not always see the vision when it comes. The shining change. Or if we see it, do not follow it. Because it is too hard, too strange, too new. Too unbelievable, too difficult. Warring too much with common, easy ways. And now I know this. Standing in this light, who've been half alive these many years. Life is not lost by dying. Life is lost minute by minute, day by dragging day, in all the thousand small, uncaring ways. The smooth, appeasing compromises of time, which are King Herod and King Herod's men, always and always. Life can be lost without vision, but not lost by death. Lost by not caring, willing, going on beyond the ragged edge of fortitude to something more, something no man has seen. You who love money, you who love yourself, you who love bitterness, and I who loved and lost and thought I could not love again, and all the people of this little town, rise up! The loves we had were not enough. Something is loose to change the shaken world, and with it we must change. Now that's well said. What? Who speaks there? Who are you? Who? My name is Dismas. I'm a thief. You know the starved, flea-bitten sort of boy who haunts dark alleyways in any town? Huh. Sleeps on a fruit sack, runs from the police, begs what he can, and borrows what he must? That's me. How did you get here? By the door, innkeeper. The cellar door. The lock upon it's old. I could pick locks like that when I was five. What have you taken? Nothing. I tried the stable first, and then your cellar. Slipped in, crept up, rolled underneath the bench while all your honest backs were turned. And then... And then? Well, something happened. I don't know what. I didn't see your shepherd or your king. But in the stable, I did see the child. Just through a crack in the board. One moment's space. That's all that I can tell you. Is he for me as well? Is he for me... For you as well. Is he for all of us? There are so many of us worthy mistress. Beggars who show their sores and ask for alms. Women who cough their lungs out in the cold. Slaves. Oh, I've been one. Thieves and runagates. The vast sea of the wretched and the poor whose murmur comes so faintly to your ears in this fine country. Has he come to all of us? Or just to you? To every man alive. I wish I could believe. And if you did, no doubt you'd give up thieving. Gently, lady, gently. Thieving's my trade, the only trade I know. But if it were true, if he had really come to all of us, I say to all of us, then, honest man or thief, I'd hang upon a cross for him. Huh? Would you? Oh, I, I see that I've said something you don't like, something uncouth and bold and terrifying. And yet, I'll tell you this. It won't be till each one of us is willing. Not you, not me, but every one of us to hang upon a cross for every man who suffers, starves, and dies. Fight his sore battles as though they were our own and help him from the darkness and the mire that there will be no crosses and no tyrants, no herods, and no slaves. Well, it was pleasant thinking things might be so. And so I'll say farewell. I've taken nothing. But he was a fair child to look on. Wait. Why? What is it you see there by the window? The dawn. The common day. The ordinary poor and mortal day. Shepherds and the kings have gone away. The great angelic visitors are gone. He is alone. He must not be alone. I do not understand you, wife, nor I. This must the thief is right. He comes to all of us or comes to none. 
Not to my heart and joyous recompense for what I lost. Not to your heart or yours, but to the ignorant heart of all the world, so slow to alter, so confused with pain. Do you not see? He must not be alone. I think that I begin to see, yes. We are the earth. His word must sow like wheat. And if it finds no earth, it cannot grow. We are his earth, the mortal and the dying, who have betrayed him once and will betray him. Forget his words. Be great a moment's space under the stroke of chance and then sink back into our small affairs. And yet, unless we go, his message fails. Will he bring peace? Will he bring brotherhood? He would bring peace. He would bring brotherhood. And yet he will be mocked at in the street. Will he slay King Herod and rule us all? He will not slay King Herod. He will die. There will be other Herods, other tyrants, great wars and ceaseless struggles to be free, not always won. These are sad tidings. No, no, they're glad tidings of great joy. Because he brings man's freedom in his hands. Not as a coin that may be spent or lost, but as a living fire within the heart, never quite quenched. Because he brings to all the thought, the wish, the dream of brotherhood. The new word that has changed the shaken world. And though he die, his word shall grow like wheat. And every time a child is born in pain and love and freedom hardly won, there will be women with a right to say, Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, a child is born. Gloria, Gloria, come, let us go. What can we bring to him? What mortal gift? I have a ribbon. It is my privilege. It is not much, but he might play with it. I have a little bell my father gave me. It used to make me merry. I've kept it. I... He may have it. My pocket's empty and my rags are bare. But I can sing to him. That's what I'll do. And if he needs a thief to die for him, I would give all my gold. I will give my heart. And I, my faith. Through all the years and years. Though I forget, though I'm led astray, though after this I never see his face, I will give my face. Come, let us go. We the poor earth, but we the faithful earth. Not yet the joyful, not yet the triumphant, but faithful. Faithful through the mortal years. Come. Come, all ye faithful. Joyful and triumphant, O oh, come ye, O oh, come ye to have just heard A Child is Born, a Christmas play written especially for radio by Stephen Vincent Benet. Next week, World's Great Novels will present the Christmas chapters from the Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens. The music for A Child is Born was written by Emil Soderstrom, and the orchestra was directed by Bernard Berquist. The entire production was under the direction of Homer Heck. Geraldine Kay was featured as the innkeeper's wife, and Maurice Copeland as the innkeeper. The narration was by Ken Nardine. Dismas was played by Harry Elders, Joseph by William Green, Leah by Martha McCain, Sarah by Ruth Shames, and The Soldier by Bob Smith with vocal music by Dick Page and the Round Towners. This is John Conrad. This program comes to you from Chicago and is a presentation of the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent station. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.